Good morning. This is Agashwani Kohima. The morning news are read by Jonas Siantan. Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority, NSTMA, will soon have a state emergency operations centre building, a state-of-the-art facility, towards Nagaland Secretariat site, Kohima. Home Commissioner and CEO NSTMA, Abhijit Sinha, said the new location will enable the accessibility and mobility of the machinery in an effective manner in any given situation. He said that the work for the proposed site will commence as soon as the state government has cleared a detailed project report and a work order was issued to the contractors. Sinha also exuded hope that the department is expected to have a well-equipped office in one or two years' time. Joint CEO of NSDMA, Johnny Rongme, said that the project cost of the operation centre building is estimated at 18 crore rupees. Rongmei further informed that the department is setting up a Nagaland Disaster Management Research Centre below the Transport Commissioner's Office, which is expected to be completed by this month. It may be mentioned that the present NSDMA's operation centre, located at Gezeke Kohima, faced a potential risk as it lacked adequate spaces and infrastructure, road network and daily routine traffic congestion. Press Information Bureau Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Gohima, organized a one-day media workshop, Vardalap, on the theme Central Government Initiative Schemes in Nagaland at Gohima yesterday. Addressing the workshop as Chief Guest, Principal Director, School Education, Nagaland, Tawasilan K emphasized on the need to create awareness of the various central schemes to the common people. He said it is the primary responsibility of the government departments to publicize the different government schemes, adding that information, education and communication is one of the key components of any scheme that the central or state government puts out. Tawasilan said accessibility to the various schemes is another problem faced by the people. In this regard, he asserted that the first key element for successful implementation of the multiple welfare schemes is to create awareness on how to access the schemes, its features and helping the people with step-by-step process to get it. He said this is when the role of the media become critical in not only creating awareness but also informing the nitty-gritty to the public. In the technical session, resource persons from different government departments sensitised the media people on the Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023, One Nation, One Student IT and Central Initiatives in Tourism Sector in Nagaland. Directorate of Higher Education Nagaland has extended online scholarship schemes implemented by Higher Education till 15th of this month. Director of Higher Education Dr. A. Nshoka informed that the timeline for online verification at the institution level and hard copy submission for students studying outside the state will remain the same, which is 30th November. Ministry of Railways in a collaborative initiative with IRCTC Limited will be operating Northeast Discovery Tour to promote the relatively untraversed northeastern states of India. The specially curated tour on Parat Gaurav Deluxe AC tourist train will be commencing its journey from Delhi Savdarjang railway station on November 16. The tour will cover Kohati, Sivsakar, Jorhat and Gaziranga in Assam, Unagoti, Akartala and Udaipu in Tripura, Dimabu and Kohima in Nagaland and Shillong and Chirabunji in Mekhalaya over the 15 days tour. The Parat Gaurav Deluxe AC tourist train has a host of modern features with fully air-conditioned train, enhanced security features like CCTV cameras, electronic safes and dedicated security guards appointed for each coach. Parat Gaurav tourist train launch is in line with the Government of India initiatives Ek Parad, Shresht Parad and Deko Apna Desh to encourage domestic tourism. Chairman Lothahoho Mundamo Vung yesterday inaugurated the Doku stalls at local ground Walker town. Speaking at a program, Vung highlighted the significance of Doku Emung. He also informed that Lothahoho will be attaining its 100 years on 6th of November and also to celebrate the main event of Tuku Festival on November 7. 
The HOHO chairman said the mini hornbill was initiated in order to create an atmosphere of festive spirit and urged the people to refrain from getting involved in unethical activities and maintain the decorum. With that, we come to the end of the morning news. Have a nice day. 